everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today I want to be showing you my cashmere Hollyoke dress, I know you forgot the name then. Um, I'll pop in the twirl video so you can see that here. And now you see my twirl video, then we'll talk about the construction and some of the things that I learned along the way. Now this is my first cashmere um, holly oak that I've made so far. And I say so far because I'm sure I will make some more again in the future. Um, it, so I, it tends to be a bit of a learning curve on the first iteration, I think, of any dress. And I think by the time you've got it nailed two or three times, then you just nail that fit even better. And also you nail the construction a little better as well. So this is a sundress with a shaped um, front to it, and then it's got a square back on it. If I just turn my mannequin around, so a square back on the back there. The square back is actually quite high. I was a bit surprised by that. I thought it'd be slightly lower, but it's quite high. It's actually got a faced front inside it, so there's facings around this top edge and around the back as well. Um, it's a faux button um, front closure, although you can have it opening if you want, but if you want to eliminate any gaping, then this row of stitching here actually attaches both row of those plackets together and there's no buttonholes it's just buttons sewn straight onto the front so that saves a little bit of time in the construction should you wish obviously if you want to you can go ahead and put all of your buttonholes in um, but is this was my first one and I didn't quite know how it was going to work out then I thought I would just go with the buttons at this stage at this stage um, the straps fit nicely over the top of my bra straps. I didn't need to adjust those at all. Um, and also on the back as well, it fits pretty well for a first go. And I find this with cashmere. I'll pop my measurements up for you here. Because I think it's always really interesting to compare, be able to compare your measurements to my measurements and just see how it fits and how, how we are similar in, um, in size and in height. Because it can give you a better indication, can't it, as to how the dress might fit on you. Um, there were a couple of alterations that I did make. I have lowered the apex point just down by one inch. And I do find that I my bras and the way I tend to to wear my breast tissue is slightly lower than that. And also I don't have a lot of, of um, um, extra tissue, extra fluff, I think sometimes people call it, at the top here. So this is quite bony on me. And then all of a sudden we've got my, my bust. So again, on my next one, and there's gonna be a tweak that I will make on my next one. But for this one, I didn't alter this neckline at all. That was all fine. All I did was I took a little bit off the side seam on the princess. So let me just turn this round. So where this cream flower sort of area is here, I actually took some off the um, side bust panel rather than the top bust panel. And I just took a little bit out of there, probably about a centimeter at the top going to nothing before the bust point. And that just seemed to sit, to pull in this section just here where I've not got a lot of tissue to fill in. Um, I did make a mistake when I was making this one and I'm going to share that with you because it might be something just to be aware of and to look out for. Um, it was on the back panel here and when I made this dress first, this section here, the side panels, because there's a seam down here and there's a seam down here. So you've got a square centre back panel here and I had um, not traced the correct line for this side here and, and then it obviously it goes into the underarm. So it's the panel starts here and then goes into the underarm. So let me just get the pattern out because I'll show you why and what happened with that for me so that um, you can just look out for it. Okay, so this is the centre back panel here and this one was easy to trace off. I did the size 14 at the top and then I just graded it out to a size 16 at the bottom. So I just drew a line between those two points and just followed it down and then just, just rearranged my... Um, notches in order to fit onto there. So that bit there was straightforward, that's fine. 
but this is the set this is the side back panel can't see me can you very well sorry um and here when i was tracing this off for some reason and I, and the lines are very clear so it, it's it's a user error it's not a cashmere problem but it's just something just to watch out for then i counted in the um 12 14 um line and started tracing that one so i traced that one off and then coming around here however the 14 line is actually the second one in from this side, so 12 to 14 there. So can you see there was about an inch difference that I hadn't got on the back of my dress. And obviously the armhole scoop is, is steeper on that smaller size. Um, so I just wanted to point that out just to be aware, because obviously if you go into autopilot or you're rushing, as I possibly was at the time, then you may not realise, because I think sometimes we assume that if we're in a smaller size, we're going to have this smaller section here. But that doesn't apply on this pattern, so just be aware of that. And what it, what it meant was that when I actually then made the dress up, and I'll pop a couple of pictures in here for you, you'll be able to see that I actually had some gaping on that back edge and it didn't cover my bra straps. Obviously, because I'd done it incorrectly. And my facing, when I put my back neck facing on, that didn't fit. But silly me, I thought, rather than stop and put it right at that point, then I'd carried on and thought, okay, you know, I'll just trim off my back facing, it won't match. And that little voice in my head was telling me something's not right here. Um, and I should have stopped at that point and had a look, but I didn't, I carried on. And as you can see from the pictures, then you can see that we've got a finished dress there almost, apart from the hem. So I'm just sort of pointing it out because obviously that's then pulling at the side of the arm and also the strap's not laying in the, in the right place either. And I don't want you to have to do that because I then carried on finishing the dress thinking, ah, oh, it'll be fine. And then obviously once I got it finished, I quite like the dress, um, and then I was really annoyed. So I did then go back in and undo all of the understitching on the facing. I took off the facing from the whole of the back of the dress, undid the side seams, undid the waist um, band section, um, and, and then cut out a new side back panel with the new tracing on it, and then did a new facing as well, and then put that all together. And that's the finished dress that you can see now. And I hope you'll agree that actually taking that time in order to put it right, even though I should have put it right sooner, um, was actually the right thing to be doing in this case because I think I've got a really nice dress there that's going to be around for a long time. So it, it's worth the effort. I know it's a, you know, we, we have that dilemma, oh, it'll be okay. But actually, if it's bugging you at the time of construction, just a quick tip that it's probably going to bug you every time you wear it. So in the law of, of averages, you're probably better off taking the time at some stage to, to put it right. It might go on the time out pile for a while, but I'm going to encourage you just to, just to have a go and just to put that right. So let me just put this pattern away and then we'll talk about the dress again. So I did twirl this dress as well before I made it and I just made the bodice down to the waistband but I included um, one section of the waistband and we'll talk about the waistband in a section, in a sec in a second, not in a section, in a second. Um, and I'm really pleased that I did because because of the way that the construction instructions are, then you don't really get to try the final fit of the bodice until it's all finished because one of the last steps that you do is actually sew through your um, facing at the underarm and then down your side seam. So the front is all constructed and the back is all constructed and then the final thing you do is sew down the side seams. Now I did choose to use a big stitch. I went up to a stitch number five length in length on the side seams while I was trying it on just to make sure that that was right in case it needed cinching in and just a little bit more or letting it out depending on how the fit was. But in actual fact, it fitted really well. And um, I've not said yes, but you'll have seen from the measurements page that this is a, a 14 um, to 16, so 14 um, bust to a 16 waist um, and 16 hips. I probably could have got away with the 14 on the hips, but not on the waist. So again, the skirt is quite full at that um, hip point. Um, and it's a CD cup, this one is, and I normally take an EF in a bra. So again, that can give you some indication. But I really would strongly um, suggest that you go online to the Cashmerette webpage and pop your measurements into the size calculator that you'll find there. It's easy to find. 
and that will tell you what size that is recommended to start with and obviously you're going to tweak it anyway to make it fit you perfectly which is what I did but that again is something that you can do and it'll give you a really really good starting point without you having to try and do the guesswork especially with all the different cup sizes because I think before I've tended to do an EF cup size well that's just proven to be too big for these days so again you know my, my I don't know about you but my weight fluctuates quite a lot um, and also um, just measurements go up and down which I think is quite normal for us girls anyway so that would be what I would do um, in and while I'm just looking at the outside of the garment the only thing that I am aware of is I've got some drag lines and I think it's on this side here on the top here and I this is my smallest side on on my bust so I think that in the future I need to just pinch out what's called a dart be done be gone um, I think that's a term by Kenneth King um, he's a, 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 a so a couture sewist um, and what he would do is just pinch out on the pattern a, a a small amount maybe up just half an inch quarter of an inch something like that but it would go to nothing so you just pinch it out on your pattern you don't sew it as a dart you just pinch it out on your paper pattern and then when you come to actually wear it it's got a shorter length on this line here and that stops the gaping which hopefully you can see has worked quite well on this dress as well because although it's quite low then there's it's, it's actually sitting quite nicely to my body without it actually gaping too much um, when I'm talking to you so that's a that's a good tip to have now it's going to be difficult to do it on one side only so I probably will end up doing it on the pattern and then cutting out both because I think that over time there'll be a bit of um, room for maneuver on that bust line as well so so that's a little little tip that hopefully will be helpful so I didn't do that on this one and I feel that the coverage is pretty good again um, I'm not planning on doing too much leaning over and what have you in this dress it's more I think with this fabric it's just more of a of a dressier dress perhaps although you can wear it with flats as well and it looks really really nice so let me just turn this round as well so my back is just fo folding out just needs a bit of a better press I think that does okay so on this waistline here you've got the elasticated waistline now um, in the instructions cashmerette does say to use a zigzag stitch to go over this elastic I tried that and I really didn't like the look of that at all so what's to because it's hot off the machine today um, but what I will do is I'm going to go back in I'm going to stretch out the elastic to the right point and I'm just going to sew where the side seam meets the side panel I'm just going to put a little bit of stitching just through the elastic making sure that it's all flat and not twisted at all or folded over just on each point of those side seams because I think that will hold the elastic enough to hold it upright for me and not make it twist uh, without me having to have those rows of stitching across the back because I really wasn't a fan of that it might not bother you and that's absolutely fine um, the other thing that I haven't done is I haven't put the pockets in because I find that if I put po inseam pockets right just here on my dresses then it adds quite a lot of bulk to here and also the side seams tend to stick out a little bit more which is not a look that I like. But what I do like is I do like the pockets that are on the Cashmerette Rivermont and I've made that before and on, I mean this is an upturn I've got on but it's got the centre panels anyway and what you can do is you could do a pocket from this point here down here using that pattern as a guide and I find that that really does is a flattering pocket on particularly on me I've got a little bit of a of a ridge here where I've got a little bit of extra extra weight and inches there and I find that if I've got those slanted pockets in a dress there that just go across here, that actually that does really work well at hiding that extra area for me. It just gives me another layer to kind of hold the dress out and not let it um, dip in too much. The only thing that I do tend to do is, whereas the pockets will sort of come round and then go at an angle, I do square them off, go up into the, um, on when I'm dra drafting them on the paper pattern, I'll extend this point here, across ways, so that it's squarer at the top here, and then goes down, because then when I am then sewing it in, that section there holds that in, and that then um, hides this section. Sorry, it's a bit, bit, I'll do it at some stage and show you, because I plan to do a, I'll do a, a sew along with the Hollyoke at some stage, but I don't think I can do it for this year, because I've got some plans already, and most of my followers seem to be in the UK, and it's obviously going into winter now, so I'm not sure that they'll even be able to make 
and wear um, a dress as um, skimpy as this at the moment without catching their death in cold. So I just wanted just to sort of kind of um, gear the content up, um, but I will do at some stage because I've got some fabric already to make another one of these and I'll make it for next year. And I will put in the slanted pockets um, and then be able to show you how I do that. But hopefully that's enough of a description if I stop talking so fast in order to help you just think about that as a design element. And I like that we can mix and match these um, designs as well, because once we've got the actual theory of how to do that pot and with the slanted edge, and then it's got a section at the back here, then we can draft that and use that on all the other um, dresses that we like. I mean, the other thing is you do put, could put patch pockets on this dress as well, um, like the Hampton, but um, for me, I like those slanted ones. I think they look really nice. So, let me just turn the dress inside out because I just wanted to then talk to you about, um, oh, I did, oh, the other thing I did do, I did put an extra button in the front because I'd got smaller buttons. I got these small wooden ones. Then they were too small in order to um, have the spacing. I think there was only supposed to be three down the front here and it didn't quite look enough because they were so small. So I did change the spacing of my buttons to accommodate for a greater number of buttons because they were smaller so that is a change as well but there's no gaping because uh, as I'll show you on the inside this is all stitched down so there's there's no possibility of any gaping at all it's just a, a faux front if you follow along with the pattern so let me just turn turn the dress around and I'll show you the inside okay so we've got the dress inside out now and my biggest issue with this dress is this edging of the facing here if you can see that's loose that's supposed to be caught into the section just here for the for the um, placket but if, whenever I had that pulled in can you see how it's pulling across here so for me I've had to snip that off it was originally sewn in but I've snipped it off and on that side it's just about that inch proud so I will make an alteration to my um, placket pattern for next time and this one pulls slightly and I will extend that bottom edge of the placket just slightly longer so that I can play around with it the next time that I come to make this dress. I will make it again, but the next time I make it as well, I'll be making it fully lined, I think, on the front, on the bodice as well. Um, again, I like to hide all of my construction and my seam edges. You can overlock them, but, you know, and I have done for some, but it's just, it's not a, it's not a finish that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of proud of, I suppose. Um, so, so just bear with me with that because the next time I will, I will probably do a faced lining, which is my favourite, where I use the facing, but I attach it onto a lining, and then the lining will get sewn in at the waist along here, and it'll hide all of that construction. I'm happy with um, either lining the skirt and probably half line it um, down to probably just mid thigh length, so I've got something to sit on because we get, I'm in southern Spain and it gets very hot here, and you sometimes you like something to be um, against your skin rather than your dress, otherwise you're pulling your dress away from me whenever you stand up um, but I just do like a lined lined front but for the for speed and just for having a go with the pattern I wanted just to follow the instructions and to see how it was um, here we can see that placket again um, and there's just no way that you can you can get through there that's that's really all nice and secure so there's going to be no gaping at all on the buttons at all which is great now when you're cutting out as well just remember that you're going to need to have the inside of your waistband as well as the outside. So actually on these front waistband pieces, you're actually cutting out four in total, two pairs, in order that you can then have them for inside and outside. Um, likewise on the back here as well, even though it's cut on the fold, you're going to then cut two of the back waistband on the fold so that you've got the inside and the outside for your um, channel really for this elastic to go through so that was something that I didn't pick up straight away as well and I just went back I wasn't reading the instructions I was just jumping on and assuming that I knew I knew what I was doing um yeah I've spoken about the elastic haven't I I've spoken about doing a lined facing I've spoken about the um channel there was something else I was going to mention and I can't think what it is just now just bear with me one second no I've tried to think and I can't remember what it was I was going to say the only other thing that I was going to mention is the length of the dress as well. So I'm 5'4 
um, in flat feet and um, I did take two and a half inches off the length of this dress in order for it to fit me properly and then I just did a double turn, I overlocked over the edge of the hem which is one of the ones I use when I'm doing a long dress like this. Um, overlocked over the edge just singularly um, and I just turn it over twice and just do a very narrow hem and that seems and just machine stitch it on my machine and that's worked really well especially when you've got a lot of fabric like this and I think it was the fact that I'd had to replace those two back panels that just meant I was kind of ready for the dress to be finished and also because of this section here then it's it doesn't feel like my my best ever um, construction but again it's about it's about sharing with you that warts and all sometimes when we're making something for the first time it doesn't always work for us quite as well as we would like to but we don't need to um, dismiss it completely because the dress is still lovely and is still wearable in my opinion so I, I'd urge you as well to to rescue what you can as long as you like the fabric and you like the overall look of course but then just make notes of that in order that you've got a, a record then for the next time you come to make it. And that's what I will do. I'll use, I use a project book generally, just a, a notebook, and then I'll write down what day I've made it. Sometimes I just staple in or sew in to the page a sample of the fabric so I can remember exactly which dress it was that I made. And then I will mention that I've reduced the side panel. I'm going to mention about doing the dark begone on the top, and I'll need to do the dark begone on the facing as well, that little little tucked just to make the neckline um, shorter and I will also then be talking about doing a fully lined in um, a fully lined bodice as well just to make that a little bit more comfy and just to hide the construction a little more and I think that should all work really well but as always it's a great pattern from Cashmerette I've really enjoyed making it and I hope that you do too and I hope just those couple of pointers that I've um, given you might just sort of either give you a couple of other ideas or just those pointers to watch out for on the pattern when you're tracing it. So I hope you've all enjoyed um, having this little twirl and review video of mine today. I hope that it does give you some pointers um, and that it does entertain you for a while whilst you're sewing yours and just gives you a couple of things to look out for or things to um, be aware of really but again another great pattern from Cashmerette um, fits great and I think it's a, a fabulous sew but as I say twirl the, twirl the bodice first um, and include the waistband because the waistband makes quite a difference as to how it sits onto your body but you just need to just be aware that you don't need to do any of the facings um, and you'll also just need to jump through the construction because she talks about the placket later on in the construction details and obviously when you're doing the twirl you need that 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 up front um, as well as the side seams but but definitely well worth doing that because that will just help you nail that fit that little bit more before you then go on to it I don't think there's any need to twirl the skirt obviously that's up to you but um, for me I thought there would be plenty of room in the skirt anyway so as I say I just I just twirled up to that point uh, and that's where I was happy with it so okay thank you everybody if you have enjoyed my twirl and review video today I'd be really grateful if you'd consider subscribing to my channel I know everybody says it but there's about we're about 40 60 split 40 percent of people who watch my videos are subscribers and 60 percent are so I'd really appreciate it if you just click on the subscribe button and then you can click on the notification bell if you want when I upload a new video um, and yeah I will see you another day so happy stitching everybody have a great day bye